Shadows can be applied many places within Brizzy elements. You can have it on columns and rows. You can have it on other elements such as your video, uh, your maps, icons, etc. There's quite a number of places that you can apply shadows and they all work exactly the same. This is a very typical example of shadows and you are probably familiar already with shadows. Let's see how it can be done within Brizzy. In the back end, I have these three images. So let's use this first image to see how we apply a shadow to it. And there are a few steps. We'll go through them so you can get the hang of it. The first thing you have to know is that shadows are grouped within color. So within the options toolbar, go to colors, click on it, and you will see the shadow selection over here. The reason you only see shadow here is because for the image, the only function we have is the shadow. For others like columns, let's go over to columns and I go to color, you will see you have the option of overlay, border and shadow. In this case, you will click on the shadow to activate the shadow settings. Let's go back to the image, color and shadow already selected. Let's first look at how things work. Go here to these four boxes at the bottom and go to the far right. As I hover over it, look what happens to this cursor over here. The far right, you see two arrows, one pointing to the left and one pointing to the right. This indicates that this part of your shadow design will work on your X axis from left to right or right to left. It will move what I refer to as the shadow box either to the right or to the left. Currently, it's set at zero. I'll click on it and then with the arrow keys on my keyboard, I will either increase the values positively or decrease it into minus values. If I increase it, let's say up to five, one, two, three, four, five, you will see the shadow moves to the right. And that is what a positive value for the horizontal axis shadow box will do. Let's make it 10 so you can see it more vividly. And there you see the black part of the box moves. If I do the opposite, and now I will just select the value and type in minus 10, it will move to the left. This is how you will move the shadow on that horizontal plane field. Double click and I'll put it back at zero. Let's move to the next one. And now you see the little icon that appears here go up and down. You can immediately understand what's going to happen here. It's going to move the shadow up or it's going to move the shadow box down. Counterintuitively, watch what happens when I make it a positive value. Let's type in here on the arrows up to 10. And you see the shadow go down, not up. And I say it's counterintuitive because you would think if it is positive, it should usually go up, right? Why is it going down? The reason for that is that most, I would say 99% of the time when you work with drop shadows in website design, it's going to be a drop shadow. So it's going to go down. Hardly ever would you have the shadow go up unless it's a box shadow. So the drop shadow, to make it intuitive or counterintuitive, a positive value will move it down. Of course, a negative value, if I type in minus 10, it will move the box shadow up. Right, so now you have a good idea of how we work with that. I'll put it back at zero. Let's make a standard drop shadow now. I have a few go-to values for that. And these values, of course, that you see here, they are all set in pixels. So my go-to value for a drop shadow is five pixels to the right and five pixels to the bottom. That gives it that slight drop shadow there. This, of course, so far is not a drop shadow, right? It's just clear, hard lines. So what we need to do is make that shadow a little bit blurry. And that is done through spreading or dispersion. If I move all the way to the fourth box from the right, you will see you have those little pixels appear there and it looks like they're a little bit blurred to the side. That is dispersion. Here you again enter a value and I'm just going to enter five and look what happens to the shadow. It becomes this blurry kind of shadow. Now it looks more like a shadow. But let's do something here now that you should always think of when you're working with shadows in website design. They should be subtle. They should not be harsh. And I see this still as a very hard shadow. It is too much in your face and, and we want to turn it down a little bit. There are two ways to do that. The first one is to choose a muted color, like a tint. And a muted color, like a tint, see currently it's on black, is a gray option. So I can just take this color picker and move it up here on the side to have a gray. And you can see 
Now my shadow is still there, very mutely, but far more effectively and not so in your face. On the other hand, what you also can do if I put it back here is that you reduce the opacity of it like this. Let's put it down at 56% and you get more or less the same effect. In addition, what you also can do, what I like to do, let's put it a little bit higher, is to increase your disperse over here to make it more blurry. I'm going to put it at 20, pretty big, but do you see? Very subtly done now, you won't even realize that there is actually a shadow there. But yes, the shadow is there and it's much more pleasing on the eye. Let's do a little bit of a different shadow with this image on the right. Go again to colors and shadows already selected. This time I want to focus on this one here, the third box from the right. This will apply a shadow box, an entire box to the whole border. You can call it a shadow border. You see that the icon is up, down, left and right, all four cardinal directions. If I click in it and I type in 10, it basically just creates a black border all around the image. And that of course is silly, unless you want the border for the image because currently there is no border setting within the image. Mm -hmm, think of that. But let's say we are sticking with our box shadow. To make it softer, we're going to do those two tricks. We're going to reduce our opacity. We're going to put it a little bit lighter tint, muted color, and then go to dispersion over here, our spread. And again, I'm gonna type in 20. I'm going to give it quite a large number. And you see, there you have that slight shadow applied to it. And this is how you work with shadows. But before we end this tutorial, I want to give you a word of advice when working with shadows. And that's often overlooked by people who start working with shadows. If you don't know how to do it properly, avoid it. Just don't do it. Because there's nothing wrong with what we refer to as a flat design. And a matter of fact, flat design is very popular at this moment. And you can think of a flat design as something without any depth, with no dimension, it's just 2D. Shadows create 3D. So keeping it 2D is very easy and you don't need more than that. If you do decide to go the shadow direction, you will have to, especially in a container like this, go and apply the exact same shadow to all your elements, like this button over here, this image over here. The reason for this is you have to think why shadows exist. They exist because how light falls from a specific direction. This current display just looks really bad. And if you didn't think about it, you wouldn't even know it because these two shadows for these two images are totally different. One comes from this direction and the other one falls back as a box shadow. The third one has no shadow, so it's very incohesive and it makes the experience uncomfortable. Remember that if you're going to work with shadows, make sure you apply them to all the elements, at least in the same block and preferably to all the elements that are similar across the page. One last thing that we can quickly just draw your attention to, which you will find in many styling options. If you go into your settings for your shadow, you will see over here, you have the option to activate the hover state. Now the hover state is very nice because what you can do is put in a different value for the shadow. And then when people hover over it, there's movement like that. Just remember that this does not apply in your tablet or mobile views because there is no way for a person to hover over a mobile display with their finger. They either click on it or they don't. And those are the shadows within Brizzy. For more tutorials on how elements and features within Brizzy work, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We release new videos weekly, sometimes daily. Also come and join us on Facebook and then visit us for the latest news and updates at brizzy.io.